There's a condition called lactic acidosis, and this is the most common mechanism of chronic disease. And I've been talking about this on my YouTube channel now for eight years. I have a playlist with 47 videos about this subject. It has a lot of different names going back over 100 years. And it's not a disease, although it is disease. It's a mechanism. So most people die by the mechanism of lactic acidosis. And their death certificate says heart attack or cancer or some disease name. Now keep in mind, disease is simply a statement that describes symptoms and lab results. It does not describe causes. There's a finite number of causes. There's, I count 10 of them, and I could be wrong, but it's a finite number, it's a limited number, and when you know how to fix these causes and stop the mechanism of chronic disease, then you can reverse engineer some really nasty, horrible chronic diseases. This video right here is revolutionary. I'm gonna go over what he's saying and why it pertains to you and every human on the planet and how this is gonna revolutionize medicine. Dr. Bill Cromwell, and he's on this video talking about a study that came out in 2023. He's part of that study. And this YouTube video is released on Dave Feldman's channel. Dave Feldman is a software engineer and he's um, very interested in LDL cholesterol. And he and Bill have teamed up and Dave actually gave a, a conference and Bill is one of the speakers. So they're both into lipids, LDL cholesterol, total cholesterol. And Dr. Cromwell's background is this. He began his practice in 1988 as a lipidologist. So people are coming to him with high LDL cholesterol, afraid that they're going to have a heart attack. And they're asking for advice. What do I do? And he's been researching the subject. And what he's come upon is a number of factors that you can test with blood, and they determine mortality better than LDL. So how long are you going to live? That's the question. And some people say, well, it depends on how big your muscles are. How many push-ups can you do? What's your grip strength? Other people say it's your fitness level. What's your VO2 max? How good are your lungs? Other people say it's all of it, but it could include how heavy are you? Are you overweight? Another factor is age. Of course, the older you are, the sooner you're going to die. So therefore, your mortality uh, goes up. Your, your chance of mortality goes up. But what Dr. Cromwell has discovered, none of those matter. <laughs> and it's quite a relief, isn't it, to hear that? So you have all these standard measurements that can be very, very scary, but yet it could be normal to have high LDL cholesterol, for example, because of genetics, because you're lean, because you exercise a lot, because you have an infection, because you have cancer, and it's normal to have high LDL. And all of cardiology is all about keeping your LDL down. We're going to get more into that. And that's just one example of how a standard blood test, such as LDL cholesterol, or another one called ApoB, you might actually want it to be high because you have cancer or because that's your genetics and it's totally fine. So if you just exclude that out of your measurements for your longevity, then what do you want to include? You want to include six factors, and they're called MVX, which stands for Metabolic Vulnerability Index. And here's the name of that title of this video. It's called, Is MVX the New Frontier in Predicting All-Cause Mortality? I highly recommend that you watch it. It's very technical. It's very complete. It is all science. I'm going to hit some of the highlights. I'm not going to go too techy, but I'm going to show you some graphs. I'm going to play some of these snippets from this video, but you should really watch it for yourself. So let's start in on the biochemistry. In this slide, it says, there's a well-documented link between mortality and syndromes of intertwined malnutrition and inflammation in several populations. So we're talking about malnutrition and inflammation, and these two things are measured in six factors in the blood. So what are these two populations that have these, uh, the syndrome of malnutrition and inflammation? Number one, older people. Number two, chronic conditions affected by cachexia, sarcopenia, malnutrition, and frailty. And so what are these conditions? Kidney disease, liver disease, heart disease, lung disease, joint disease, rheumatoid arthritis, and cancer. So these are the two populations that have cachexia, sarcopenia, malnutrition, and frailty. So let's think about these four words. I'll show you the next slide. 
The title says metabolic and inflammatory contributions to mortality. Metabolic meaning how your digestive system is working, but more importantly, how are your cells metabolizing nutrition and expelling wastes? And then inflammatory contributions. So where is the disease state? How much disease state? How much inflammation? And how is your body able to repair? If your body cannot repair, inflammation stays high. If it can repair, inflammation goes down. So you want to be able to heal to keep the inflammation down. So when you have malnutrition and high inflammation, then you have a variety of terms describing that situation. And in this slide, he has protein energy wasting. Number two is cachexia. Number three is sarcopenia. Number four, and I like this term, he says malnutrition dash inflammation complex syndrome, MICS. What's another word for cachexia? It's lactic acidosis. I've been talking about this for eight years now on YouTube, and now we have Dr. Cromwell. He's measuring lactic acidosis directly, and I'm really excited about it because now you can measure it better than just testing lactate in the blood. You can measure these six factors. Now, over the last 100 years, there were other names, and I've documented some of them, but the most common one going back to the 1930s and late 1920s is lactic acidosis. And I have 47 videos about this on a playlist. I've been talking about this for eight years. It's also been called the Cori cycle, C-O-R-I, named after the husband-wife team, Drs. Cori from the 1940s. They got a Nobel Prize, figuring out how when the mitochondria don't work well, the body ferments and it's making energy outside of the mitochondria in the cell. It's different than glycolysis, which is where the body's burning sugar. It's where chemicals are fermenting, such as alcohol. That ferments. Sugar can ferment also. Another word from the 1960s is called sugar acidosis. And of course, the word fermentation. This is a disease process. It takes energy from your body. When you burn sugar, glycolysis, it gives you energy. It gives you two, maybe up to six ATP. And when you burn fat and you, in ketosis and you're using mitochondria, and mitochondria are making energy through the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain, then you get a lot of energy, you get 32 to 36 ATP with no waste products. But the third way that the body tries to make energy is, for, is through fermentation. You get a ton of waste products, you actually lose energy, and this is called the death cycle, also known as cachexia and all the other names that I've just said. So there's ways to break out of that, but sometimes it's too late. But if you're walking around now and you're breathing air, you, you want to try now to reverse any hint of lactic acidosis, cachexia, malnutrition, inflammation, complex syndrome, whatever you want to call it. And this is the basis of true health care, knowing this cycle, MICS or lactic acidosis, and reverse engineering it. When you understand this physiology, then you can maintain health and actually reverse a poor health condition. What Dr. Cromwell is talking about is called MVX. It stands for Metabolic Vulnerability Index. And it's a measurement of six things. Four of them are metabolic and two of them are inflammatory. And the two inflammatory ones are called glyca, and the other one is the small HDL particle size. So you want that number to be very high. If the small HDL particles are low, that's bad. Then leucine, valine, isoleucine, and citrate, those are nutritional. So the first three are amino acids. And the fourth one is one of the core structures of mitochondrial function, citrate. In the mitochondria, we have the citric acid cycle, also known as the Krebs cycle, citric acid. So if you don't have enough citrate in your mitochondria, then they're not going to work very well, and you have a um, higher chance of mortality within the next five years. And this is all measured with these six blood tests, and you put them together, it's called MVX, Metabolic Vulnerability Index. Now, this is key. If you have a chronic disease, and you just start adding leucine, valine, isoleucine, and citrate, does that reverse your chronic disease? The answer is no. This is not a measurement of disease. You can take a lab of this and show low leucine, for example, and start taking it, you're not helping your body. As a matter of fact, I know this firsthand. One time I had a patient years ago, and she had ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, which is horrible. I don't know of anybody that reverses that, but she came to me for some help. She had some hope. I'm willing to help her out and try. And I gave her 
a protein powder with high amounts of leucine, and she put on five pounds. And I thought, oh, great, she's getting, she's getting stronger. This is reversing it. But then that didn't last, and her muscles got weaker, and it didn't work out. So you're not treating lactic acidosis or MICS, whatever you want to call it. You're treating the causes of it. What Dr. Cromwell and his associates did is they took these six blood factors and they made a scoring between zero to 100 on thousands of people. And this data was uh, collected in four different studies. We have CathGen, Intermountain Heart, Mesa, and Prevend. And they just watched these people over the years and they saw the people that died and they looked back at their blood test and they saw six markers that were off. And this is how you predict mortality. Normally, you just look at their age and say, oh, look, you're old. Your chance of dying in the next five years is very high. And if you have very poor kidney function, which is down here, EGFR, that means you're going to die soon. And if you have heart failure, you're number three on the list of mortality. That's the old way of looking at it. Now, with these six factors in MVX, we can see at the very, very top how significant they are in predicting mortality. And age is the next one, but it's all the way down here. And then you have smoking, diabetes, heart failure, kidney function, and BMI. So that's all down here. It's very insignificant compared to these six factors. Now, in this graphic, we have on the left cumulative mortality incidence. And at the bottom, years of follow-up. And you can see the different colored lines. So the red line at the very top, these people have all six of those factors. And they had mortality of over 60% in five years. And their MVX score on a scale of 0 to 100 is greater than 75. Their average age is only 62.6. Now let's pick one in the middle. This is more purple, blue color. And their score is only between 60 to 64. And they live to be 61.9. You can see the age is not a factor. It's these six factors uh, measured by MVX. Their cumulative mortality incidence is only at 30%. It's not at 60%. And then let's pick a green one down at the bottom. Their cumulative mortality incidence is only at 5%. And their score is less than 35 on a scale of 0 to 100 and their average age is 58.3. They have resilient health. So they get into a car accident, they survive better. If they catch uh, pneumonia or some uh, disease, whatever disease it is, they're more resilient. And with the higher score, they're more vulnerable. So out of these thousands of people over the course of five years, the incident mortality rate was significantly higher over the, over the score of 75 but their ages are between 58.3 and 62.6. So age is not that much of a factor. I wanna let Dr. Cromwell tell you in his own words. Indeed, MVX risk is equal for men and women. It is true regardless of your age, less than 50 or over 70. It is true regardless of your BMI, less than 22 or over 30. It is true whether you have or don't have hypertension, whether you smoke or whether you don't, whether you're diabetic or not, whether you have heart failure or not, whether you have a previous MI or not, if you have angiographic cardiovascular disease or not, chronic kidney disease or not, or whether you're just healthy. Wow. This is common soil that transcends disease states. So what about a healthy population? The multi-ethnic study of atherosclerosis, MESA, average age in the early 60s, free of disease, followed longitudinally. What would the quintile MVX association with mortality look like in men and women in MESA? The same as you saw with cath gen or intermountain heart. I could show you this for Prevend. I could show you this for other populations as well. In his next slide, he's going to go over this quote. And listen very carefully because he skips words he only reads the ones that are underlined you and i are going to go over all the words together and we're going to talk about the implications of this and whether or not this will be implemented in all of medicine this is taken directly from the paper and it is implications what are the implications of this our results suggest that survival might be more dependent on previously unrecognized causal factors distinct from those that are responsible for the development of disease Hmm. Treating the underlying metabolic dysfunction 
of these overlapping syndromes might provide greater survival benefit than targeting conventional disease risk factors. Okay, now we just threw a hand grenade in the room. And it's really, really exciting, I think, but there's more. I'm all about treating modifiable risk factors. Okay, wait a minute. That's the whole point. Measuring and treating risk factors. That's been the problem since day one with medicine. I'm all about improving health. Those are two different things. You can treat LDL, but your health gets worse. You can take a drug to reduce inflammation, but your health gets worse. There's many examples of taking drugs for a risk factor and your health does not get better. That's the point. So we can do things that start with diet, exercise, comorbidity management, risk factor modification, and give you a better chance of avoiding some of these heart attacks and strokes. But I have no idea if it's going to extend your life one day. That is more likely due to metabolic vulnerability than risk factors. So now we're going to read this together. It says implications of all the available evidence. Our results suggest that survival might be more dependent on previously unrecognized causal factors distinct from those responsible for development of the diseases or vulnerabilities considered to be the causes of death. If supported by future research, treating the underlying metabolic dysfunctions of the overlapping syndromes of cachexia, sarcopenia, malnutrition, lactic acidosis, and frailty with anti-inflammatory, comma, nutritional, comma, or alternative therapies might provide greater survival benefit than targeting conventional disease risk factors. So back up at the top, it says, survival might be more dependent on previously unrecognized causal factors. I'm gonna tell you what they are. Parasites, mold, lime, heavy metals, chemicals, viruses, plastic, organ dysfunction, drainage dysfunction, and nutritional deficiencies. It's a finite number of causes. And it says, distinct from those responsible for development of the diseases. True, these entities that cause chronic disease are not the same as the disease that you're diagnosed with. So you can have a virus in your heart, you get diagnosed with heart disease. But the problem is, it's a virus. You can have candida in your gut and parasites in your gut. You're diagnosed with IBS, your irritable bowel syndrome. But that should not be the diagnosis. It should be candida or it should be parasites. Another example is your A1C is too high. So then you take metformin because they call it diabetes or prediabetes. They're reducing your risk factor. But they're not addressing the, the cause. And most chronic diseases are multifactorial, including heart disease. So when I see somebody who has heart disease, they're overweight, they're prediabetic, I'm not just thinking about their ketogenic diet that they need to go on. I'm also looking for any kind of immune system problem and toxicity and the 10 things I mentioned earlier. Chronic disease is multifactorial always. So these causes, there's 10 of them, are distinct from diseases. There's a difference there. So you can target these with anti-inflammatory therapies. I'm not talking about Motrin and drugs. You could do berberine. There's a ton of herbs that are anti-inflammatory. I have white willow bark, which is what aspirin's made from. And that's pro-healing. It's not anti-inflammatory because nutrition and herbal therapies are not technically anti-inflammatory. They're pro-healing. Inflammation occurs at step two of the four steps of healing. So when you squash healing, you do anti-inflammatory measures at step two, then you prevent step three and four from happening. So you don't want to do anti-inflammatory. You want to do pro-healing. But when you get rid of the causes, inflammation goes down. I got a patient who, she's got ankylosing spondylitis. Tons of parasites have come out of her body in the last two years with my therapies. Her inflammation, her C-reactive protein, was over 100 for years, and now it's below 40. The goal is below three. So our therapies are anti-inflammatory. I never gave her anything that's anti-inflammatory. I gave her stuff to get rid of her causes. It also says nutritional or alternative therapies to provide greater survival benefit. Notice it doesn't say more drugs. It doesn't say more symptom suppression. It doesn't say more control of the biochemistry, blocking, deleting, erasing chemicals 
from the body. It doesn't say that. It says nutritional, which is enhancing, and alternative therapies, which are enhancing. That's the gist of this paragraph out of the study that he's getting all of his data from. The end results of all of this is enhance your health, improve your health. Drugs don't do that. They'll save your life if you have a bad infection, you get hit by a bus, go, go get some drugs. If you have a heart attack, go get some drugs to save your life. But what do you do after that? You have to enhance and improve your health. And medicine doesn't do that. Just for historical fact, I'm going to show you some old books that talk about lactic acidosis. Now you can call it MICS. You can call it half a dozen different names if you want. But this book is a collection of articles written by Dr. Royal Lee, the founder of Holistic Nutrition, between 1932 and 1961. And probably a third of these articles talk about lactic acidosis. This book right here is the endocrinology textbook from 1932 by Dr. Henry Harrower, the father of endocrinology. And every organ that he talks about, he mentions lactic acidosis and how to reverse it. So in the 1930s, all the doctors and students studied lactic acidosis as if it was the cause of chronic disease. And they're trying to reverse it, but it's not the cause, it's a mechanism. The causes um, were sort of being discovered at that time, but it's taken decades to figure out all the other causes. This book called Textbook of Nutrition from 1935, and this book called Vitamins from 1938, they talk about lactic acidosis. This is Dr. Max Gerson from 1958. He was kicked out of the United States. He moved to Mexico. You may have heard of the Gerson therapy. He talks about lactic acidosis. This is a compilation of the history of lactic acidosis, published in 19. 76, and it's called Clinical and Biochemical Aspects of Lactic Acidosis, forward by Sir Hans Krebs. 2012, this book, Cancer is Metabolic Disease, written by Thomas Seyfried, and he's bringing back lactic acidosis because it was forgotten for so long, for decades, and he's bringing back the work of Dr. Otto Warburg from 1929, who got a Nobel Prize. He just was starting to figure out how uh, cells and mitochondria were working. In this magazine, 2014, it's a great article, Lactic Acidosis regarding heart disease, written by Dr. Tom Cowan. And this is a reprint of a historical book back in the year 100 by Galen. And he's talking about how people get sick. He's referring to smallpox, but he's saying that the people that get sick with smallpox, their bodies are fermenting. Their blood has been fermented. So this was even understood 2,000 years ago. This MVX panel of the six lab tests showing cachexia, lactic acidosis, were studied through um, the help of this guy, Dr. Alan Ramelli at the NIH, Lipoprotein Metabolism Department. And on this webpage, there's a phone number. I called it, and Alan picked up the phone. I was like, hey, this is Dr. Darren Schmidt. I'm in Michigan. I want to run MVX, and I'll do it on myself. I'll do it with my patients. And he turned me down. He said no. And he said the reason why is because it's not accepted by conventional medicine, and the other reason is because you're not measuring disease. And I said, yeah, that's the point. Everybody's measuring disease, but this measures the mechanism of disease. And if you can figure out how to reverse engineer it, then, then you can actually help improve health, and then people know where their status is. But he was trying to push me off the phone, and he was successful at that. So um, we cannot go through the NIH to measure these six factors, and then the point is to get a score between zero to 100. Now, he did confirm that LabCorp is the company that's actually doing the measuring. So I contacted LabCorp. They did not get back to me. I contacted Dr. Cromwell twice by email. He did not get back to me. But I did contact his company, the, the lab that's called Precision Health Reports, and I was talking with them, and I'd say I'd be happy to promote the MVX to doctors. I'd, I'd use it myself. That'd be amazing. Because that's actually the turnaround of our whole medical system. If you're measuring actual you know, mechanism of chronic disease, then you take the steps to reverse that. Like That's what it's all about. So risk factors alone, not good enough. And as soon as I get my hands on the availability of this test, I'll talk about it on YouTube, and I'll see you at that video. I created the 7-Step Blueprint to Optimal Health. These are the steps I take people through in order to reverse the uh, 10 different causes of chronic disease. And you want to try to do it in order. Sometimes you can't. But I walk people through this. This is, this is it. This is the answer. This is the end result of me studying and practicing hardcore holistic nutrition 
since 1993. And I look for all other ways to get around this, to bypass it, to add to it or subtract from it. I've not found any other way to do it. So if you want to be a patient, you can contact my office or you can get my audiobook slash ebook. I'll put the link below to get that. It's $4.99. It's really cheap. It's well worth it. It's my life's work. I highly recommend that you watch this full video, all 46 minutes of it. I did not do a good job of showing you all of it at all. Just watch the video. It's amazing. I've watched it five times. It's that important. And it's all science. It's fantastic.